My Gavan and Melonin, and well met indeed. I'm Arach here, Galadareth, and head of the modding team behind Divide and Conquer, and welcome back to Dol Amroth as we continue on with our quest to save Gondor and Rohan from the ravages of Isengard and Mordor. In the last episode, of course, you saw that Imrahil was humbled through my poor action as cavalry commander, but also with a touch, um, I would say, of Isengard's just preeminence as an anti cavalry nation. Uh, but in any event, Imrahil lost quite an important battle, and we did not take the town of Ginyard, which we were hoping to take, so that we could then either sell it back to Rohan or just whore it out for a load of gold coins. We make quite a lot of gold coins, so it's not overly pertinent, but um, it, money is, is always nice to have. Uh, elsewhere, Adril, of course, died a few terms ago. We won, a, we beat back Mordor from Adrahil's seat, and our army is now ready to ride north. We want to capture Minas Morgul if we can, and then that will really shut Mordor down. But we're really hoping that Gondor takes Eastern Osgiliath so that they can send all of these armies across the river. But also, we're not too keen on them doing that, actually, because Isengard is now rapidly closing in from the west, and we need to decide where our armies are going to be sent. Oh, Mithras doesn't like us. Why do you not like me, Mithras? What have I done to you? 40% squalor. You need to upgrade. And... But for some reason you cannot upgrade. Is it, oh, I believe you may be at this time point that you can upgrade, but you just don't have a master builder to do it. Although no, no one is, should tell me when I hover over how many people are needed. And maybe then we've reached the point that that's probably what it is, isn't it? Let's go to a town that can upgrade, like Baradhan. And yes, it hovers over and lets you know. Where's a castle? That will help as well. 6,000 is the upgrade. So yes, Methrust was able to upgrade 2,000 people ago. Uh, so we need to get on that, and otherwise that will just start to hate us. Uh, anyway, um, one thing is, obviously normally there's a Skyrim episode today, but I, um, I was just not in a mood to record a video yesterday. And my golden rule for YouTube is to never record when I don't feel like it, because then I always regret the video that goes up. So I didn't record yesterday. Uh, and today, unfortunately, lack of foresight, we've got loads of stuff to do today. So I needed a video that was just quick, I can get out easily. The Skyrim videos, I, I record a lot more than you see, and I cut a lot of it out. And it takes quite a while to edit. Um, and so whilst I, I'm not stopping Skyrim, I just don't really have the time, but tomorrow I am free, so that I hope to do Skyrim tomorrow. So I've just swapped these two videos around, is essentially what has happened. Right, so our Amrothian army here, if we can get on that bridge and just wait for a moment and see what Mordor do, that's our first port of call. And over in Rohan, we hired a number of Rohiric mercenaries again to supplement our army to keep Imrahil's forces in, t in strength. And we need to help Rohan as best we can, but I want to do that by taking something. Um, but <laughs> Isengard really is a very well-equipped uh, nation to deal with cavalry, and all we're sending at them is cavalry. What I would quite like to do is actually get Imrahil back, pull him, uh, and I, I'd like to swap him over to this side so that we can take back what Isengard has claimed here, sell that back to Gondor, and then come up at Isengard from the west. Um, but to, in order to do that, we've either got to run the gambit of getting through the gap, which is really not easy. I'm sure there are troops all over the place and they'll definitely hunt him down. Or we have to run all the way back around the White Mountains, which will take forever. Um, so we're between a rock and a hard place, really. So what my, my thinking then is that because both of those options will take too long, we might as well just harass the Isengard forces that we can see. Um, and just try and keep their numbers low and, and keep Imrahil going over there. His son is, of course, now um, getting involved, is he not? Where is Elphir? Um, he is going to be leading an army, isn't he? Oh, yes, he's in that fort at the moment, waiting for the troops to arrive. Um, and look, there's some ready for you here, actually. Let me take three of them. Free upkeep. Always nice to keep the free upkeep. Methras can give you some troops as well, actually. Not as many as we would like, because it is not upgraded. Uh, in the south, everything's going fine in the south, really. We're just building economic buildings there. And we saw last time as well, of course, that Cand over in the east are really, really up against it with Rune. So they are they are basically out of the Mordor fight. So it's me and Gondor versus. Uh, and that is where we are. Um, I'm thoroughly enjoying playing Dol Amroth. I absolutely love playing Dol Amroth. And um, I also... I'm looking forward to playing as Ened Wyeth as well. So at the moment, I'm in quite a good space with Divide and Conquer. I'm thoroughly enjoying playing it, even if I'm not doing too much modding at the moment. Although, in the last episode, I was mentioning about how people... It's irritating that people comment on older videos. And then it's as if the universe heard me, because then the very next day, a gentleman commented on a video that was three and a half years old and told me that the audio quality was bad. 
Um, and it just like it just blows your mind. I don't know what what is he hoping to achieve with that comment. What possible goal is there for telling the three and a half year old me that that particular video had terrible audio quality? Uh, and it wasn't just that. Oh, the audio in this episode isn't very bad. He, he said it in a really rude way because that's what unfortunately most people do. So just to give you all a little idea of the annoyance that um, we face daily uh, and why some YouTubers quite rightly turn comments off on old videos. Uh, right, so this is the army that Mordor is bringing against us, which as you can see is quite rubbish really. There are a few late game, but there is a lot of early tier Mordor units in there. Now there's some low gambling again, remember they're pikes now, so they're um, annoying to deal with. But there's nothing in there that we really need fear, and unfortunately, like the morons that they are, did I just save it? Yes I did. Mordor are attacking us on a bridge, so <laughs> we'll gladly hold the other side of this bridge against you Mordor. Come at us, and you shall find the swan's wings as powerful as its talons. <laughs> I'm surprised that nobody has moaned about the fact that talon knights are called talon knights. Because, of course, swans do not have talons. Swans are in the same family, I should imagine. Or they are the same. They're a water bird, and thus they have webbed feet. They do not have talons. But webbed knights doesn't really sound as good, does it? Um, not particularly, unless you're playing as Dolgaldor, maybe. We have got a plethora of archers, which is fantastic. So, Mordor will really enjoy coming across this bridge today. We've got our own pikes. Now, what we're not going to do is try and shut the bridge off. That just never works. Instead, we need to create a sort of circle area and allow our archers all the time that they need to shoot into that central area. Um, speaking of which, oh, and let's just get the cavalry out of the way because they're not really going to do out today. So let's just quickly group those up and send them off. We might charge the cavalry in. You can often on a bridge battles, you can use cavalry for their morale effect more than their damaging effect. And so even though they don't actually really do anything, the mere presence of another unit fighting against the enemy sometimes causes them to break and rout. Um, and so that's something that we can try and do. We do not have very many melee forces as you can see, and so maneuvering them into a sort of horseshoe is going to be a bit of a challenge. But we might as well set up the ones that we can. So you're going to go down on that left hand side, and I think we'll send you down on the left. Haven Guard, you'll take the right with the Amphalas, and then you guys are going to form the main set. So we might as well get you guys ready. Seaward and Guardsmen. Now the Seaward are the direct upgrade of the Guardsmen. Should we have a go in and have a look at them? There they are, in all their splendour. Guardsmen on the left, Seaward Spearmen on the right. If you're wondering where the Seaward in their name comes from, that is often the name given in English for the Tirith Ayar. It is known as the Tirith Ayar, uh, which just means Sea Tower. And in English it's sometimes called the Sea Wood Tower, rather than just Ocean Tower or something. Um, actually, it doesn't mean um, Sea Tower. Tirith, as in Minas Tirith, um, means... Um, guard, it doesn't mean tower. So the Tirith IR actually means ocean guard or sea guard. It doesn't actually mean tower. Um, but it's called the Seaward Tower when spoken of in English. Right, you're all getting into position, that'll do nicely. You guys have moved up, there we are. Everyone's in defensive mode and the Haven Guard are going to take that, that back spot, which primarily means that they can come in and hit the enemy in the back. That's the goal there. Cavalry, you can come a bit closer because we might charge you in. Right, so the halberds are coming down. We don't really want to waste too many arrows on them, so don't fire at them just yet. But you can start shooting at the Loke Gamp Rim. I will not stop you doing that. Something that someone suggested to stop all to help with the archers is to group them all and then ungroup them just so that they're all in the same place. And then if I select all five of them and tell them to target the Loke Gamp Rim, they should then target them individually and not change their targets like they do when they're in a group. Um, but we will see. There is a lot of forces, of course, coming across this bridge, and the bulk of it is at the back there, annoyingly. But we will stand and hold them nevertheless. We've killed 5% already, and the archers... Mm, they're not doing too many. There is also, of course, a command to select all missiles, which I think is Control-M. Yes, it is. Um, so you can press Control-M, and that will select all your ranged units. Like, likewise, I think Control-C is cavalry. There you go. And I assume, therefore, that Control-I is infantry, yes. 
Um, so those are some unknown buttons as well. Now, regarding Warhammer Total War Warhammer 2, of course, the DLC released on the 3rd of this month, which was a couple of days ago. So rather than waiting right until December, I think I will see what sort of things I'm up to in the evenings over the next few weeks and, and maybe start bulk recording that um, now, to be honest, just to get going. Um, I'm interested in that. I've never played as the Wood Elves, so I am likely to play, if I'm honest, as Orion or Durthu before I play as the Sisters. Um, and also because I imagine everyone, every popular YouTuber and their dog is probably playing as either Dreicha or the Sisters. Also, I've when I saw the word Dreicha and with the, the small linguistic knowledge that I hold, which is a little bit of Italian, a lot of Sindarin, and um, now apparently a tiny little bit of Gaelic, um, I assumed it's Dreicha and pronounced with a H, not, not Dreicha, but I've seen many a YouTuber and it has to be said that almost every single one of them that says it as Dreicha um, is American. Um, not that that has any real bearing, but in my travels around the world, whenever I've bumped into an American, and I'm sure there are many amongst your number who do not conform to this stereotype, but I have yet to meet an American person abroad who tries to speak another language. Um, and they often just speak louder and now don't get me wrong English people do exactly the same we are, we are known for that problem as well um, but I have seen a few English people try and speak other languages myself included but I'm, I've yet to meet an American try and speak Italian for example or uh, Spanish or French which is interesting because of course Spanish is very rapidly becoming America's second language isn't it um, and your nation is so diverse that Spanish is, is creeping up there with English, which is understandable. Your nation is built on immigration. Um, and so it's likely to have a complete conflux of languages. I note that German is still quite widely spoken as a second language in America as well. Um, you will note that we are now getting absolutely smashed. So what we're going to do is turn those into... Um, Everyone can come out of defensive mode. They've absolutely smashed through the Seaward Spearmen. That is really disappointing. Um, our archers hopefully can keep them at bay a bit, but they're... You're going to have to get in to defend the archers. You're going to have to run away. That's ridiculous. The Seaward Spearmen like, just completely capitulated. That is... Insane. If they stand on top of each other, they always end up um, not fighting properly. Right, target that big blob in the middle. Come on, target the large blob in the middle. You've all got plenty of arrows left. You can do it. You can do it. They're all standing still. The Haven Guard are keeping them pinned from left down right. Look how many there are. It doesn't matter if you miss now. Just hit that central glob. I mean, we have killed an awful lot more of them than they have of us. Um, our cavalry has gone in there. We've sacrificed um, the cheapest cavalry that we've got. You guys come over here. That side's breaking. We'll get you ready to charge. New, uh, the cavalry in this battle is far less important than the archers. So the cavalry has gone in to try and stop them getting to our archers. Because if this big blob here can keep getting shot at, that is the goal today. Pick up your bows, countrymen. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. The Haven Guard will hold on that side till the cows come home and then some. Right, we'll charge them in for the little boost that we'll get from that. 50% of the enemy has gone down. Pinneth yelling cavalry charging in with a thunderous roar. That's fantastic. Knights of Pinneth Gelling. Pulling back, pulling back. That was a good little charge, guys. See, it's times like this that I really wish this UI could be updated with per unit kills, like mid-battle, so that we could see who's done what. Oh, bugger, one of our arch units has been caught. Um, that one, though, we'll be able to charge in and fight in a second. Pinneth Gellin going back in again. What are we on to now? 65% of the enemy has died, but the arrows are now running out. The arrows are running out. Right, get yourselves over there. Have you finished? Yes. Right, you guys go for that. And then try and get that arch unit out. Two-handed swords at the ready. Oh, shaken. The Black Orcs are shaken. Yes. This is a little lesson that has taught us, unfortunately, that 
even though we are up against a horde of Mordorian trash, we need a better planned army. Right, keep firing down the centre. Black Root Vale are coming over to support. Get yourselves involved there, like sirs. We will smash the I have no doubt that we will now win, to be honest. I think we're getting to the point where the enemy is starting to break and shake. And actually, if we just mass charge that centre, I think that whole blob will go now. Um, those maulers are running. There's a lot of shaking units in there. No, don't get caught on the halberds. Get punch through, punch through, punch through. You keep firing at the walk band at the back. We've got units over here that are routing. Only the Lok Gamprim remain there. Charge the generals in. I think we can probably speed this up now. Yeah, look at that. Huge routing numbers. And finally they break. Fighting to the death. A lot of fighting to the death. And it's over. We've won. Gondor will be saved by the Amrothian steel. Uh, no, we'll end it and let them run with their tails between their legs. This is a great victory worthy of only the mightiest of generals. 432 souls, 3,358 black, twisted, destroyed souls. And the highest kills go to, by some degree actually, 378, one of the Black Root Vale archers. Second place, 300, oh no, sorry, 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 471 Nimrodel Mariners proving that they are Dol Amroth's finest archers. Then second place was Black Root Vale, and thirdly, Haven Guard at 312. Haven Guard are monsters. We just need more of them. We really do. And the Binneth Gelling Cavalry, let's have a look. They killed 128, so not loads, but they didn't have a lot to work with. They couldn't fully hit the enemy, could they? They were having to hit them in pass and flank around the side. But we held Mordor back, but that was only one of Mordor's armies. They have two full banner armies hovering around Eastern Osgiliath. Um, and... <laughs> The other one, I am sure, is probably now going to move and attack us following that victory. If we can try and get over and pin Minas Morgul in now, it will at least deter Mordor's um, movement out. Kill them all. Oh, they've sent a Nazgul against us, but he's not attacked. He's just come and stood next to us. But with that, um, with the threat gone, Gondor might finally attack East Nazgul. Look at the ridiculous difference in the armies of the besiegers and besieged. Eastern Osgiliath will fall in a heartbeat. Um, oh, Finabel just got a master horse breeders, but that's miles away. <laughs> Why would we want it in Finabel? <laughs> well, we can get Seaward Lancers now in Finabel of all places. How handy that will be in the coming wars. Um, although, Finabel, have you got a port? No, you've not. So let's chuck in one for you. Oh, and I can see you can get a mining network there. Um, well, let's go for a mason tool first, actually. We'll worry about that afterwards. Uh, Tirithoros isn't building anything. You can get a port as well. Port's always welcome. Let's get that sea trade up and running. Um, ah, you've made it home. Where well, the reinforcing army yes, is coming yes, along. Ah, does that mean the Atheland army is ready? One more turn. Right, so we've got one turn for that. Methrest. Give us a couple of guardsmen. I mean, at the minute, that's all we can get, so we might we might as well. Um, there's a fort up there. Can I take all four of you into that? Yes. So we'll send the ship up there, actually, and we'll pick up the Thelen forces first. Um, they'll be ready in a turn, and then we'll swoop down, and we'll take those forces from the fort and from Mithras, and then that's good to rock and roll all night. Um, Reach train. Can't do out. So the bomb enemy camp sacked. Construction complete. Tirithoros built roads. Oh, fantastic. Well done, sirs. Well done. Much appreciated. Haldenur, how do you hate or like us? What's going on over here? You've got a port, haven't you? Yes, already set up. You could get some farms in. Why the hell not? Chuck in a grain exchange when you're done with that. Adrahill seat. Just keep just converting. And the army. The army, right. You're going to stand on that bridge until reinforcements can come through. Oh, come on, Gondor. I could always assist, actually, couldn't I? Um, but then if I attack it, that means that I'll get it. I don't really want it. Oh, we didn't do anything with Imhill in the end, did we? Now the two armies are standing together. Um, as some have suggested, oh, look at the ridiculous speed that we lose when we get two units that are on foot. Right, Rahira Marchers, you're a scout. Head out and scout. Oh, look, Ginyard has nothing again. I really want Ginyard. Oh, I so want Ginyard. 
that was, those units were just a waste of money. We want Guignard as quick as we can get it, so we're going to try and beat maneuverability and speed is our is our friend here. Um, they'll probably almost certainly attack Haladan, but if we can get those guys in it on the next turn and besiege this city, then we can start building the battering ram for the arrival of those foot units. One hopes. That's the plan, anyway. Uh, move slightly further north. Let's have a look. Oh, Mordor are attacking Kairandras as well. Oh, come on, Gondor. Attack is not going to you slow moving bastards. Uh, who else can build a thing? Uh, no one. I think everyone's building. Ah, uh, Imrahil's Point. You've got a port, haven't you? Shipwrights are in. That's good to go. Meeting Hall Library. Feather. You are technically a castle and quite a, a large one. We should really be trading stuff from you. Um, but then three turns, that won't be ready for a while. But then you might as well if we can afford it at the moment. Um, I will take dirt paths when you can offer them. I'll take a barracks and a practice range and a stables because why not? No, 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 no. Let's try and get the masons up first. Yeah, nice. Right, um, so we can end the turn again, I believe. There we go. Oh, yes. Nice. They finally did it. They finally ascended to our wishes. And now the river is freed. It's held in Dunedain hands. Although not really Dunedain. It's a bit of a stretch, isn't it? It's like the Holy Roman Empire calling themselves Roman. It's kind of not really there anymore, are you? Um, we are. Our blood is thoroughly watered down and mixed with the lesser folk, as they are often called. In fact, much of Middle-earth history is written from the perspective of the Numenorians, if you really think about it, and considering themselves haughty. Even though it's supposed to be written from the position of the um, hobbits, really. But in practice, it's just a, a it's just a 6,000 or 9,000 year long um, worship of the Dunedain. Although that's not really true, is it, of course, because they didn't become Dunedain until the end of the first stage. Right, we've been attacked by this army, which holds no threat whatsoever. Um, they've got one unit of pikemen, but pikemen, when they are totally isolated like this, are useless. I can't believe they think they're going to win this. And... The pretenders of Dunland have brought their own cavalry here to fight for Isengard. <laughs> Morons, we call these. They will be schooled. We have plenty of Ambrothian steeds and combined with the might of Rohan in our army. There is nothing that this foolish army is going to do. But also we get the benefit of them having to attack us. So we can fan our army out and allow them to break their army up into smaller groups. Right, you guys go over there. I will actually group you this time. I don't know why I didn't do that last time. Habit of a lifetime. Why suddenly change it? Uh, we've got quite a few units actually that aren't really up to snuff. So let's group those together instead. And have a little sort of bait army. It's always useful having bait. My time with Battle Royales has taught me that um, in a team it's always useful to have someone who's willing to act as bait. And there they are. We'll have a look at them in a second. The finest Rohan has to offer, the Royal Guard. And Imrahil, I think, should probably be on his own because he packs such a heavy punch if he can be given free reign to charge into an enemy. Um, um, we'll send the archers up there then, I think, actually. Let's have a look at them before we begin. In all their splendour, Rohan Royal Guard. Now, the um, the barding underneath them, or the sort of chainmail cover on the horses, um, many people really didn't like that introduction for the Royal Guard, but I personally think it's it is perfect. It, a, it meshes quite nicely with their actual armor, and so they blends rather well. And also, it finally sets them out as Rohan's best unit. Something that Rohan has long suffered with is a sort of uniformity to the point where it almost is a detriment. Their army looks so homogenous. Everyone is in chainmail, and everyone has green coloring. Uh, so there's very little that differentiates their units. As you can see by just scanning the unit cards, um, they're really very similar. It's a lot of greens and greys and browns. Um, and the Royal Guard are no exception. They suffer from that same fate. Um, of course, on the silver screen, which is where Rohan's unit designs and inspiration come from, because they're all taken from the movie, that isn't a problem, because you can, you're can you so up close and in with the detail that you can see all the finer aspects of their design. But in a game like this, where you're hovering above the battlefield for most of the game, they do just turn into a sort of green and grey blob. Um, and so giving the horse, even though the chainmail is, of course, just more grey, it really does stand out as a different unit. When you hover over the field, you can see, oh, those are barded, they're my royal guard. Um, so I'm all for it. Right, um, the unit that is not really very strong, what I'm going to do with you is run you around the back and try and take out the siege with you. 
Imrahil, if you would be so kind as to... Um, let's make everyone run, actually. Archers, just come in a bit closer. I was going to charge Imrahil into those Urukai archers just there, but I've just seen the pikes are going. Oh, the pikes are turning back. So, Imrahil, if you could take those archers out in one go, that'd be smashing. You guys come down the hill here and go around the back. Um, I think the Dunlending Cavalry is going to try and cover the baluster. So we'll have to try and deal with that. Oh, here we go. Imrahil, unimpeded, charging into the side of those archers. There were 123, and after he's finished with them, there are 50. <laughs> now, you thought you knew what Amrothian might was like. You're about to see it full force. Oh, they did charge into those. That's fine. Right, you're going to go to there. Right, you guys come and hit those raiders as well. Move up. Move up. Let's get Imrahil over here. Uh, cavalry there, can you charge the pikes, please? Can you pike? Right, pull out. The enemy general's gone down. Hit that augment spear guard instead. And then you can come over and hit those raiders. You're pulling out. I'm offering these up as a sacrifice just the to keep the Dunlending Horsemen busy. Victory the Dunlending Horsemen aren't really a threat, but what they can do is disrupt our cavalry charges, and they'll do that really quite well, and we don't want that happening. So if we can just keep them tied up with, an, with units that are already marked for death, really... Uh, that's I think is a good use of their time. Our archers over here should be targeting those pikes. Imrahil will go and finish off those Urukai archers and you guys will have you standing by and ready for when we have to finally deal with the pikes. Are those raiders taken down? They're down to 77. The ballast crew has been completely wiped out. Get Imrahil out before the pikes get him. Oh, that was damn close. Those archers are wavering, shaken. Right, you just finish off those archers then. Right, if you guys can come and stall those spear guard and Imrahil will hit them in the side. We still, we'll still try and just use up all our arrows on those pikes before we need to charge into them. Right, Imrahil, now you can come back on the spear guard. They're coming in on the spear guard as well. How are the guys doing over here against the Dunlending Horsemen? Oh, they're losing. So you guys can go and help. And you fellows come back on those raiders. Ah, oh, here we go again. They're facing side on. It's not the way to be when the Royal Swan Guard comes smashing in. If we continue like this, Although, we'll smash the because they're a damned fine anti-cavalry unit, they only lost about five men. Very annoying. Pikes are still taking losses. The Urukai raiders charged in the back. It's good to see. It's the problem with spears. It doesn't matter if their battalion loses all sense of order and organisation. So the spearmen are, are facing all different directions. But each individual spearman is so good against each individual cavalryman that it doesn't matter what way they face, really. After the initial charge, they will just shred us. So we've got to watch out for that. Right, you have beaten the Dunlending Cavalry. That's good. The Ballister crew is buggering off. They're running away. Uh, archers over here. Oh, no, they're not running into the archers. They're running into the Royal Guard. Keep up the fire on those. Those raiders are down to 29, but they're still going on. This has been a lesson in actually... This time I don't think I've commanded the cavalry all that badly. Um, and Isengard really is just a very good anti-cavalry nation. No wonder that they destroy Rohan in the auto results. <laughs> right, both of you hit those spear guard. Imrahil hit those spear guard. You go for those raiders. I've got another one up here. Finish off those raiders. And what of the pikes? Now is the time. Our archers are out of the um, munition. So we'll get the royal guard to charge in and then all three of you are going to charge into this unit. Now is the time. So the Royal Guard have plunged into the heart of those unending pikemen. Oh, they have decimated them. Catch pikemen off guard and they will fall. More cavalry charges in and they are broken. That's the pikes gone. So I think the problem really is not necessarily Isengard's innate anti-cavalry buffs, but more possibly Isengard's general strength as warriors. The fact they have more morale, they don't break so easily. Those pikemen broke almost instantly. I don't think we lost anyone in that attack on the pikes in the end. But Isengard are just not giving us any ground. Yeah, capture as many as we can. Particularly those spear guard, that's why I want gone. 
Not bothered about the cavalry, but kill those spear guard. Thank you. So more lessons are being learnt. Isengard really is going to be a challenge, but this time Imrahil actually stepped up to the plate. He showed what he's all about. Second place is 114 Ered Lancers and Rohirrim at 102. The Royal Guard killed 66 and they charged in once. We probably should have used those a bit more, really. Match Isengard's more elite units with our own more elite units. But with the knowledge that the mercenary system is working properly, finally, um, we can replenish our troops. It's not a problem. Oh, something I was going to say is many thanks to each and every one of you for your many suggestions on the Mordor overhaul. I've not gone fully through the comments yet. Um, I was just browsing through them as the, the days passed since the video released. Uh, one of the big things that was brought forth is that we should... Um, Izzy made some suggestions about Eisen about Mordor sorry, some time ago and posted them in the suggestion thread. And his suggestions were seen and I believe were given the green voting symbol. Um, but rest assured that I have read those suggestions and indeed um, changes to Mordor will come. Right, another Isengard army comes. Two generals. Um, there's Spear Guard again. But otherwise it's a bit ragtag really, isn't it? Most, much of their numbers are coming in the form of Reavers, Raiders and Bane Guard and Spear Guard. Everything else is battered and bruised. Um... I think we can do it. So we'll, we'll fight this one just before the end. I don't know where that, uh, that Shagulf is the guy who was standing outside Edoras. Um, so it's very disappointing that he's made it all that far when we are cavalry. We should have made it much further than he could ever make it. Um, but then the roads obviously have assisted him and he started on the northern side of Edoras anyway. But all the time that Isengard is trying to deal with this cavalry army, they are not focusing on Rohan and that's what we are doing here. Even if we lose these battles, by giving Rohan one or two turns where they're not being besieged, we are achieving a goal. Uh, this time we're just going to stand in a line, because last time I, the enemy was caught all adrift on our line. I'm thinking of a full frontal charge to nullify the larger unit sizes. Oh, there's a few pikes there, that's annoying. I know they've got siege at the back, and oh, that's units. There's the raiders. Cool shields, very cool shields. Very high quality unit, the Raider, isn't it? Look at the. There's no blur or, or any form of. Um, like popping or, or gaps or holes or anything on their body. They're a really, really high quality unit. Alright, so there's the main four units that we've already pointed out as threats. You can see them from a mile off. And the rest is all this sort of crap down the middle. Um. But it's interesting to see how they're dividing up their lines. The one units that we definitely want to group and send off to fight are the archers. So we'll send those out on that right-hand side, although the wargs are over there. And remember that wargs do actually get an inherent bonus against cab, because wargs, say it with me now, are camels. So they do get whatever the game's hidden camel bonus is. I, I honestly have no idea. I've never seen anything written anywhere explaining what exactly camels get as a boost over horses. Is it that, for example, a horse unit attacking a camel unit suffers morale losses? Or is it that the camel unit does more damage against the horse? I, there's just no information on that. If anybody knows, please do, do say. Let me know what it is you think the camels get over the horses. There's a troll coming down the middle. Um, right, the siege is going for you, so what we'll do is charge you around the side and we'll just charge you in to deal with the siege. Just shoot at what you can while you're on your way and then deal with that siege. Right, if you can just go and finish off those crossbows, because there's only nine of them and they're charging in ahead of the rest of the army. So we'll send in the Royal Guard, get them down, done and dusted early doors. Oh, the banner of Isengard is trampled underfoot instantly. A single crossbowman survived. Oh, no, look, him and the officer. The officer always trails the unit for some reason. All right, pull back. Right, that's that crossbow unit dealt with. We've got some wargs charging in there, and we've got the troll. But the troll, under the full force of the Royal Swan Guard, I don't think he's going to stand up to this charge. Oh, no, he did. He did. But the wargs have come in and we should be able to get them all then. Alright, pull back. That is a massive army that's coming through now. There's the main bulk of their force. Friends. Pull away over there. You guys, who charged into you? Oh, the warg marauders did. Oh, fantastic. Oh, that's good. 
So the wargs are dead on both sides, so that's the threat of cavalry gone. The trolls have taken a hit, but they, it might not do enough. Right, we're going to go around the sides, and they might try and curl around. They'll probably want Imrahil. He's high on their list, I should have thought. Right, and there's the spear guard. So, let's get you over on the side. Royal guard pulled back and get ready. We're going to do a concerted team effort on taking down that spear guard. All of you together are going to charge into that spear guard unit. It's completely isolated itself. So let's give it a good old thrashing. You fellows can hit those raiders now. Oh no, hit the all thank guard. Yeah, and you can join. Oh no, we're curling around, curling around. And the spear guard, how did they do against the full cavalry charge? They did really very well. We killed quite a lot of them, but nowhere near enough. Right, pull out before the other enemy forces arrive. Get out, 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 get out. 127, that's not bad actually, is it? All thank God stood up to the Royal Swan, that's a shame. There's pikes over there doing nothing. Oh, and a large chunk of the army is pulling back. The Bane Guard are going back to, to for some reason, to deal with these units up here. So give them a merry chase. Oh, our Pinnacelling Cavalry have gone down. Defeat seems almost certain. Right, run away, run away, run away. Run over there, please. So we've got a number of the Spear Guard. We are taking a lot of losses. Right, those are at Grievers. They're perfectly placed for a charge as well, I think. Royal Guard. Lancers are down. Reavers have no defence against cavalry. Absolutely none whatsoever. And I think we're about to witness the complete decimation of this battalion of Reavers. That's what you want to see when units charge into unshielded infantry. The entire battalion, in essence, has been wiped out in that single charge. The glory days of cavalry command are coming back. Right, we've also managed to dis completely nullify their siege. The Bane Guard have been... <laughs> the Bane Guard have been frolicking around at the back there, wasting themselves. Right, nice, nicely done. Pull away, pull away. You fellows, you've got the troll chasing you. Can we get this troll down once and for all, please? Who's this over here? Spear Guard. Ah, oh, they've turned on their side. No, they've turned to face. Go for the Raiders. Imrahil can come in across as well. Although that's quite a, a jaunt. He's going to be knackered when he arrives. Now the Raiders aren't really an anti-cav unit. But they do perform much better than the Reavers. Primarily because they are shielded and, have s and uh, that just tends to always help in defence. Come on, Royal Guard. Get, get out. Get out. Just knock them out of the way. You're on big, heavy horses. There you go. There you go. Oh, even that last fellow made it out alive. That's nice to see, isn't it? Right, what's happening over here? Who are you tied up with? Oh, those five more marauders. Oh, and there's more spear guard. That's all that's left of them. 46. Oh, no, that's a smaller, weaker battalion. Okay, and what's happening over here? Urukai Pikes have caught our units over there. Let's pull those away. Imrahil, let's get you around. In... Oh, these Bane Guard, actually. That's a prime target. And you're going to go for the Bane Guard as well. We're down to 50% of the enemy is now dead. Oh, you can charge into the Bane Guard as well, actually. That's a f full battalion, which has not really been used. Rohirrim. Keep that zoomed up so that we can see what's going on. Right, they've hit the Bane Guard and the Royal Guard are coming now down the flank. Now this time we won't really see any routing because there are two generals fighting here today. That turned into actually quite a poor charge, all things considered. There's that Rohirrim unit over here. Get you back involved. We've got two units over there doing nothing. Come and get involved. And the cavalry is now well and truly out of arrows. So we want to be charging you in now. The uh, range cab over there. Oh, you've stayed and died. Very well, so be it. You want to be a bit thinner. A bit thinner. Come on, Imrahil. Hit them. Actually hit them. Do what you are born to do. There it is. That is what we've been waiting for. An absolutely cutting charge into the flank. we finally got the unit to not be facing us. And they did what needed to be done. You can come and help. You can come and help. 
We've got units over there still. Yes. All oh, come and get involved. Everyone take their turn at these guys. Oh, the troll's gone down. We finally lost the troll. That's good to see. The bodyguard has been hit. I don't think that will do as the much damage, though. Bloodied. They have lost half their men. Those raiders there. No, that did very, very little indeed. The Urukai bodyguard is going to be really hard to take. The spear guard are down to 23. They are gone. The bane guard are gone. The spear guard are gone. 68% of our enemy survives. And Imrahil does another absolutely brutal charge into those raiders. <laughs> Imrahil's numbers today are going to be huge, I think. This is fantastic. But there are still two generals knocking around. We can't ignore them. A large number of our forces are still holding on, though. Oh, that all, thank God, is still alive. Oh, go and finish those archers off. Yeah, send those into those. Is that, that's the pikemen. We, well, pikemen are going to be the last on the list. Who's still alive over here? No one, really. The Royal Guard are really, really good. They are, we definitely want to get more of them if we can. Definitely want to get more of them. Now, the reason that we can get Royal Guard, I think, is because the only problem with the mercenary system... No, 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 we set in... Did we put in checks? Um, if memory serves, the Dunedain mercenary system all over the world, we did put in a check to make sure that only the Dunedain actually got to train those mercenary units. But certain units will also be available to Dol Amroth and Gondor, depending on the way that that um, ends up working. And so I think the Royal Guard are only available to us as a bit of an, a bit of an offshoot of making the Dunedain mercenary system work. Uh, but don't quote me on that. I'm, it was a long time now, it was quite a while ago, that we actually changed the Dunedain to have a mercenary system instead of a training system. Uh, someone did ask about the Dunedain, with them being changed to mercenary, with the Beacon of Hope being mercenaries instead of training. If you take the regions that those troops come from, can you still train them normally? And no, you cannot. Um, there are only a few units that are still trained specifically from certain regions, and the Royal Guard are one, actually. So the Royal Guard do train as mercs, but also if you capture Edoras, you can get Royal Guard. Um, but no, on the for almost all of the units, generally speaking, if you capture the regions that they would normally come from, it will allow you to retrain those units there, but you can't train them from your barracks. Um, and for the very reason that we took them out of the barracks in the first place, if you can train them from the barracks, it doesn't encourage you saving your allies, it encourages you attacking and destroying your allies. This is most seen with Bree. When you're playing as the Dunedain and you want to train the Bree land units through the Beacon of Hope system, it was always a better option to simply wipe Bree out and then train their units from the regions you've just claimed, which is of course so, so against the law. And whilst this is a obviously alternate setting of Lord of the Rings, and it is inherently or possibly against the law in any event, we don't want to be egregious with our law breaks. We've set it up so that Middle Earth can be used as a fairground for a total war setting, and, and we've broken the law where and needed. For example, the entire High Elven um, nation is essentially a law break. They would not fight in a total war setting in the Third Age. But we don't want to go over the top with it. And that's something I've said many times before, so I'm just rehashing old ways. Um, on the name change, by the way, I've been banging on about Divide and Conquer changing to Middle Earth Total War, and many of you have come forth with, with examples and problems and complications of calling it Middle Earth Total War. And the primary problem that I've seen is there was a mod for um, Crusader Kings... It two? Is Crusader Kings 3 the one that recently released? I can't quite remember. But anyway, there's a mod for, I think, Crusader Kings 2. The old Crusader Kings, in any event. And it's called the Middle-Earth Role-Playing Project. And they received a cease and desist from Warner Brothers, um, and they did actually end up stopping their mod altogether. They completely shut it down. But the only thing with that is that there was a game from the 80s and 90s called the Middle-Earth Role-Playing Project. Merp, many of you may well know it. And it is from Merp that we get most of the Nazgul's old name descriptions. Um, and so I think that their cease and desist was not necessarily because they used Middle Earth, although I'm sure that was a part of it, but it was probably more likely that they just straight up used a trademarked name. Um, their entire mod name was was already a trademarked name. So I think that is primarily where the problem came, because there are a few other Middle Earth related projects that have succeeded. Oh, bugger, we've just charged headlong into those points. They turned around at the last. 
And Imran Hill's not really charging. Oh dear, 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 oh dear. Pull everyone out. How many Royal Guard do we think just fell in that headlong charge into those pipes? The battle is very much Pick a favor. side, you annoying down. bastards. Um, but anyway, so my, the thinking at the moment, um, for me only, I've yet to discuss it with the team. Um, I don't know if the team watch my videos, to be honest, I doubt it. But uh, I think RK might tune in every now and then. Um, but my thinking at the moment then is to, to, in an attempt to avoid any threat of Middle Earth being a trademark and being a problem and being an issue, is that in order to ensure that we have a link to Lord of the Rings, I think the best course of action would be to call it Enorath Total War. Um, 299 Royal Swan Guard, 324 Royal Guard. They beat Imriel. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic showing. Um, Enerath, for those who don't know, is the Sindarin version of Middle Earth. Um, now, we could have used the Quenyan, but I think you'll quite quickly understand why the Quenyan version of Middle Earth won't work, because the Quenyan for Middle Earth is Endor. Um, and Endor Total War will almost instantly make everyone think of Star Wars. I'm sure it just did for all of you as well. So we can't call it Endor, of course. If Middle-earth is going to create even a minor problem, um, we, we should not invite problems, of course not. And if Middle-earth is going to give us even a small chance of a problem, calling it Middle-earth Total War, then I would suggest that we do avoid that. And personally, I think the next best option is Enorath Total War. Now, the only problem with that is that Enerath, like Endor, really, is quite an unknown word for Middle-earth. So we may well end up falling into the same camp that people won't know what our mod is about. But I think people that do know of Lord of the Rings will, it will link Enerath to Lord of the Rings and it will spark that in their minds. Um, similarly, in the way that the primary mod for Battle for Middle-earth is the Edane mod, or Edine mod, sorry. But then that's a bit different as well, because that is a mod for a Lord of the Rings game. Holy Sheebus, that is a massive one. Right, I think we're we're teetering on the uh, on the edge of losing Imriel now. Oh, we can train two more of them though, fantastic. So we'll make our stand. Um, so the minute Enerath is my thinking, I'm really, really set on us choosing our own name now that we are not part of Third Age Total War. I do not see the point in, give, in continuing having a sub-mod name when we are now a main mod. I just don't think it's worthwhile. We can't call it Third Age, of course. Re see, Reforge, they've done it quite cheaply. Reforge name is Third Age Reforged, so they dropped the Total War and they just called it Third Age Reforged. So again, it keeps that Lord of the Rings link. But ours, Divide and Conquer, means nothing. And all of the people who currently play Divide and Conquer will know what we change our name to, so it's not going to affect any of our current players. I can only see it enhancing our player base numbers, because people may then find a Lord of the Rings connection. Now, personally, I would rather stick with Middle Earth Total War, and I mean, my, that is my actual personal thought, is balls to it. Let's just go with Middle Earth Total War and see what happens. There are a few Middle Earth uh, mods out there for various other games that have Middle Earth in the name, that have no problem. And it could well have been that... Um, min so I think Middle Earth Role Playing Project was stopped because um, Middle Earth Role Playing Project was a game from the early 80s and 90s that Warner Brothers likely now have the rights to. Um, and there was a Skyrim Middle Earth project, which I think was likely stopped because it directly come. It was a direct competitor to a number of actual Lord of the Rings games, because a Lord of the Rings version of Skyrim is a competitor, I think, to War in the North, the Shadow of Mordor games. That one actually affects Warner Brothers' copyright of that. Whereas I don't think there's really any counter to uh, to us. There's no Lord of the Rings version of a Total War game. Battle for Middle Earth is the closest strategy Lord of the Rings game. Uh, and that's wildly different to a Total War game. So Middle Earth Total War is still my preferred, but we will see. Enerath if need be. It could, I mean, to be honest, we already use enough of Warner Brothers stuff that, I'm, that if they wanted to stop us now, there's no reason they couldn't, regardless of our name. But anyway, I'm getting off track. I just thought I'd talk about that at the end. Um, I'm sure many people are tuned out for that bit. But for now, that's going to conclude this episode. So thank you very much for watching, if indeed you have. There will be a Skyrim video tomorrow, and then we're back to Anduin next week. And then hopefully sometime um, in the near future, I'll pop up a Warhammer 2 Wood Elf campaign as well. Um, and as I say, like it will be exactly like the last one, where I'll pop up various episodes, and they'll probably be about an hour long. Um, and we'll just go from there. So, until we do speak again, Navarna den Perimad Melonin, and farewell.